welcome to another edition of the Lamont Experience, brought to you by Boston Cannabis Week and produced by the good people at Experience Creative. Of course, I want to give a shout out to the people at Boston Hemp Company and MCR Labs. Uh, my name is Lamont, and these are my experiences. My guest today is a very, very talented singer and rapper. Uh, her career is amazing right now. She's blowing up. She was just nominated for three, count them, three Boston Music Awards. That's three more than me, yo, which I'm going to protest that. But anyhow, uh, give it up for my good friend, Jasmine Red. What's up, Jasmine? What's going on? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me be a part of it. I appreciate that. Yo, you're going to help blow me up by all these nominations. <laughs> I'm saying, so let's start, like, why not just start right there, yo? Like, sure. when did you, you find out? When did you find out? Um, I found out yesterday, actually. Yesterday, uh, I was scrolling through my Facebook, and I saw that, you know, the, the nominees had been posted. And so I was like, oh, let me go. Let me go see. You know, I've never been nominated for a Boston Music Award before ever for anything. Um, and so I'm scrolling, and I'm looking through, through you know, the categories, and I'm like, okay, okay. And then I see my name. I was like, wait a minute. I see my name a second time. I was like, hold on. <laughs> wait a minute. So you, 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 had to scroll, you had to find out yourself? Like, they didn't email you? They didn't call you? Nah, nobody told me that. <laughs> so what if you never, like, what if you, what if you went, like, what if you were on, like, a, a, a internet a hiatus? Like, you know, I don't, internet's too serious right now. I'm staying away from it. And then you never find out. Yep. For sure. For real. Ah, <laughs> uh, they gotta step it up, man. They gotta have somebody call you. Like, it. They gotta have somebody at least come to the crib, knock on the door, leave something <laughs> in the mailbox. Shoot me something. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, but yeah, I, I did I saw it on the timeline and then just started scrolling through and I didn't even realize I had the third one until I had already gotten on the phone and started talking to, to somebody about it and I'm still scrolling. I was like, wait a minute, I got a third one too. <laughs> so what what which awards are you nominated for? I'm nominated for Breakthrough Artist of the Year. I am nominated for um, Song of the Year for We Gonna Make It, the, the record that I did with um, The Archetype. And I'm nominated for um, artwork, album artwork of the year. Yo. Shout out so, to Day Camp Creative and Nicole, I appreciate you. <laughs> so the, the real talk is like, I got you at the right time because after this, it's a wrap. Like I'm not gonna be able to even connect with you after this. <laughs> You gonna be the musical guest on Saturday Night Live by spring? I hope so. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. That's what I'm shooting for. Honestly, like I didn't. I, I, you know, to be nominated for Boston Musical was at all was was dope. But like to be nominated for three for my first time getting nominated at all was just like whoa. Like that's come crazy. on now. Let's not. I know you're humble and you got it. Oh well, I. It's just an honor to be nominated. You know you'd be in the bathroom like, I know they know what's up. I know they know what's up. A little bit, a little bit. Come on like, now. Let's, let's, no, you can't unsee me. I'm here. Let's keep now. it real. It's like, come on now. I'd have been, man, I'd have been calling up, I would have been calling up enemies, but you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> I should have done that. That's a good point. Oh, so like, are you are you ready for the night? Like, are you prepared for the night? Wait a minute, so this, it's going to be virtual this year, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cause I was gonna, that's right. Uh, it's, so that's a little different. I hosted it a few years back. Not bragging, I'm just saying. Oh. And I just remember what a, like, they give you comps and stuff so you can have family and stuff coming. I don't know what your family's like, but mine, I have to tell my family, like, here's the deal. All right, there's, there's comps at the door. After a certain time, I have to prepare. To yeah. host the show and of course your family they, they don't see you as you know how your family is they see you still as for me my family still sees me as a dude who needs to hurry up and take out the trash you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like you know so my family showed up and i remember like after the first segment i go up i come off stage and i'm in the back and i'm getting some serious instructions for the next segment and then somebody comes back and goes oh lamont your uncle's out there he <laughs> says it's an emergency and i'm like oh i mean i don't know what's going on I go out there, my uncle just goes, what's up, big time? What's going on? And he's looking behind me. What's going on yep. backstage? Can I get back there? Yeah. Like, no, there was no, there was no, my cousin's like, yo, Lamont, do you know if they serve chicken wings? I'm like, I don't work here. 
So, yeah. but for you, for you this year, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, just got to make sure you get them ticket links or get them links for the, for the uh, virtual show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have they filled you in on how that's going to go yet? No, I, I don't know anything yet. All I know is that I got nominated for the three awards. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm, I'm psyched for you, yo. Like, I am. Thank you. Yeah, I watched that, um, your latest video, and you seem to have a very conscious vibe. Like, there's nothing, uh, I've, I've watched a few of your videos, and it's a very, a very uplifting vibe. And uh, and you and you and you music and you sing and you rap and it and it's all it's all great. What are your influences? Like, who are your biggest influences? Um, I would say number one, my biggest influence is definitely Pac. Um, I grew up listening to Pac like real young. Like, I remember getting in trouble because. I came home from school and nobody was home yet. And I was a latchkey kid, you know, I got my little, my key and my book bag and I came in the house and was listening to me and my girlfriend, the unedited version, because somebody was like, thank you for it. And I'm walking around the house, rapping it. I'm like, maybe in like third grade and, and my pops walked in and he was just standing there and he's just watching me. I turned around, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, like I was listening to Pac super early like that. So, um, you was in Pac. trouble. Yeah, I, I was definitely, I was in trouble. Um, Tupac first, I would say, uh, Lauren Hill and Queen Latifah. Absolutely. Of course. Um, I don't think Queen Latifah gets enough. Not at all. Love. It's, if you look all her, everything she does, I, I'm not even, I'm talking musically. Like, yeah. she's kind of become just an actress now in people's minds and, and people just seem to forget how she kicked so many doors down back in the 90s and late 80s she's people try to clown when i when i say like yo like queen latifah is one of the illest female rappers like period they like Hi -hi, any rapper for real. Any, like, no, for real. <laughs> like, like any mc female male whatever yeah she's taking she's taking down lots of cats yeah queen latifah i mean we forget like she was when they when she got living single. I think she was like twenty two. Yeah. At that point, she had already taken over the rap game. She was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this acting thing. She's kind of she has dominated everything she has entered, and yeah. I don't think she gets nearly the credit that she deserves. She's such an influential figure, and I'm glad you said her because not enough people bring her up. I would say like her career influences me the most. Like if there was a person who I said that, who, who I felt like I would want to model my career trajectory after, it would definitely be Queen Latifah because I, I do all those things, right? Like I want to act more, I sing, I rap, I'd love to have a talk show, like the, you know what I'm saying? Like I'd love to be in film, I'd love to have, you know, TV show, that sort of thing, like to be a, a mogul in that way. Um, especially for women of color. Um, I, that would be like, if I had career goals, I'm definitely looking at, at Queen Latifah for, for my career goals, for sure. So that's not a bad career goal to follow, man. She's great. <laughs> um, hey, listen, you want to act, I do some other stuff too, so I could probably, you know, like I, I have, a, a, aside from this, I have a, another web series that I haven't been able to do for a while because the, zombies, the zombie apocalypse is happening. <laughs> but uh, once that gets dropping again, like, I always need people to come in and do stuff, so yeah, I'll definitely reach out and holler because that's good to have some talent on hand. Uh, and speaking of that, man, like this world is is bananas right now. How are you handling the quarantine? Like, how are you? What's your what's your quarantine schedule like? I think I have watched every good moderately good and so so show between hulu amazon and netflix like i am just locked in like i'm getting locked into different shows and like that's kind of how i es escape the thought of like it's crazy out here for real and i'm stuck in the house and i can't go nowhere um but yeah it's it's tough. I, I've been, you know, I've been busy because I've still been, you know, I'm grateful to still have been working like throughout, um, you know, COVID and having quarantine and stuff like that. And so just work and music keeps me preoccupied. And as soon as those things are done, I am chilling, 
watching something. <laughs> Yo, that's exactly my, that's like my life. Ever since March, I I don't think I've uh, I don't even know what jeans are anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't even know where any of my jeans are. Uh, I'm I'm all about sweatpants. If I ever got do any meetings in the future, guess what, y'all? I'm showing up in my sweatpants because I can't fit into anything else right now because quarantine has got me snacked out. Okay, I'm snagging on every ten minutes. I'm like, you know what I can do? I can eat. I'm good right now. <laughs> hmm. I keep my snack game tight, and I've discovered like Instacart. You know what I mean? Like I don't even leave it, man. That's another thing I'm doing. Like I got, I've, I've developed a real Amazon problem for like everything to the I'm door. Popping so much, I'm like redoing my living room and redecorating my bedroom. And this is a nice shower curtain. Like I just, I, it's a mess. It's a mess. Like it sucks that it sucks why we have to be in quarantine. Yeah. But like I know a lot of people had trouble and had problems with quarantine. But I don't think quarantine uh, understood how lazy I am. I was like, where? Hold up. I have to stay in the crib and eat and watch TV? I bet. I didn't. I always, you know, and and I always thought of myself as very much like an introvert. Like I am. I'm a homebody. Like I'm very to myself. I like to be in my own space, in my own house, with my own stuff. Like I'm like that. And then when quarantine happened, it was like, Maybe I'm not as much of an introvert as I thought I was because I wanted to, like, I wanted to be social and I wanted to go out. Maybe it's just that I don't like when people tell me what I have to do. <laughs> Yo, what are you I like what to do you what mean? I want to do on my own accord, you know? And so, like, if I want to be in the house, that's because I want to be in the house. But if you tell me to be in the house, it's like, well, wait a minute. I want to go out. Like, <laughs> uh, See, we must be twins or something because I'm telling you. I hate the idea of having, I, I like going places. I like the places I am when I get there. Mm-hmm. I don't like having to do things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you have to do this tonight. I don't want, I mean, I don't want to, like, I'm the king of making plans and being out, yo, man, I'm down. And then immediately being like, ah, oh, I got to actually do that shit. Same, same. For sure. How do I get out of this? You know, so like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't like, like, I hate, I don't even like eating in restaurants. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, I, can I get it to go? I eat it at home. And that's why I don't understand, like, with what's going on, people saying, like, I, I, I understand restaurants needing to make some money and opening up, and that I get. Yeah. But people needing, I got to go out and get a drink with strangers. Like, I don't need to see other people. I, I got booze at the crib. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't need to, man, I can't wait to be amongst the crowd again. No, yeah. it's all right. Yeah. I didn't like them before all this happened. <laughs> and it's like, it's not even like I'm looking to go out all the time. Like, I just want to step out one time yeah, and then be just, back in for the next three months. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, just fill the small extrovert need that I have and then come back. It's like the performer life, right? Like, when I go places, when I have to travel, um, I like... I feel accomplished when I come home. What I do before I leave, I make sure, like, my room, I clean my room spotless. I make my bed, everything. So when I come back, it's like, hey, Lamont. Yeah. What's up? And I feel like whatever, how many days a week I've been out, I feel like I've done something. And, mm-hmm. and I hopefully never have to do it again. But, of course, I got to do it again in a few days. But, like, I feel great when I come home, and I, and I don't ever want to leave again. Yeah. Uh, yep. So... <clears throat> Uh, for me, when I knew I wanted to perform, and I, I asked this of a lot of performers, mm-hmm. as a comedian, I knew when I was 12 years old that I wanted to be a comic. I knew, I told a joke in the cafeteria, and the entire, the entire table, table next to us just erupted in laughter. And I know the power I felt mm-hmm. from being able to do that. Like, I had no idea my voice would have such power. I knew in that moment that I wanted to be a comedian. For you, what was that moment when you knew I'm picking up that microphone, I'm letting my voice be heard, everyone's gonna hear what I have to say? Um, for me, it was it was probably the first time I ever did a show, which I was 10. Um, so I have had kind of like the unique experience of growing up in a very musically inclined family. Um, mm. 
particularly involved in hip hop. So my dad rapped and, you know, I grew up with like him, like going to do shows and like making a CD and going to the studio and like oh. making the first music video I was ever in was my dad's, you know? So like, I grew up with that heavy influence and my aunt, she sang and she rapped and you know, our family friends that live next door in the complex that, you know, my Nana lived in, they all rapped and did music. And like the DJ that I work with now when I do shows, JL Hayes, he used to DJ out of his window to all of us as kids. You know what I'm saying? Like he put his turntables in the window and be playing music out his window in the summertime, especially. So it's like, I grew up with all this kind of around me. So I started rapping when I was like seven years old. Um, okay. That's when I wrote my first rap. And I started singing around like 10. And I remember me and my aunt, we, we wrote a song together. And um, there was a, 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 there used to be these parties that uh, one of the DJs around, you know, my way used to host that were like all ages parties. Cause there's nothing to do out here, right? So right, right. DJ Rome used to host the DJ Rome parties at um, one of the event halls we got out here. And um, my aunt was gonna perform. And so I was gonna perform with her. And it was the first time I had ever done a show. It's the first time I had ever been on stage like that. Um, it was maybe in front of like, they used to be packed. It was like 150 people there, like at least. And That's I got up there and I, I rapped, I, I did what I did and like, Ever, after that, you could not get me off of a stage. I was I used to play basketball in middle school. I was rapping at the basketball games at halftime. I was rapping at the dances in middle school. I had a CD that I started selling in the seventh grade that was like, you know, okay. like seven okay. songs on my little mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so you were starting, <laughs> so you were starting in middle school. You came to school like, yeah. What y'all do this weekend? Go to the park? What you do this weekend? I got to go on tour, you know. I got my album that just came out. I mean, I'll be in the studio exactly. doing my thing, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. I got a party to get to. I got to perform at these parties. You don't understand nothing like that because you're going to be at the playground. <laughs> I, That's I hilarious. I was going to the strawberries and, and grabbing the big box of, like, multicolored blank CDs and coming home and, like, lining up all my tracks on the, on the uh, computer. On the Mac shelf? the big back Dell computer and like downloading, making all the mixtapes and signing them with my little signature, bringing them to school, $3 Ooh. for mixtape in seventh grade. I got in wild trouble for that, but. <laughs> nah, that's all right though. The, the, yeah. the experience is what it is, man. That's what's up. Yeah, so you, yeah. you just grew up in, you just grew up in the business. So you came out, you came out like, let's get it. You came, yeah. I'm coming out. <laughs> I want the world to know. Oh, hold on, let me chill. <laughs> I want everybody to know I got pipes. I want everybody to know I got pipes. <clears throat> that's that's beautiful. Uh, I I think for me, my first real performance, and I don't even know if it's a performance, but uh, when I was first grade, you know how you have show and tell? Yeah. And like, I forgot my toys that day. And the teacher was like, don't worry about it, Lamar, it's okay. I was like, I got something else. And I got up in front of everybody and I sang the Scooby-Doo theme, but I sang that shit like I wrote it. <laughs> I was like, Scooby Dooby Doo. The only way to sing songs is you sing yep. them. <laughs> had my fit. I had to, was doing one of these, like in the, and I was talking about I was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> the '90s R&B group thing. You know, uh, going to. It in. Yep, you know it. You know it. <laughs> had to let them know. I had, I had a crush on this one girl. I looked her right in the face. Where are you? <laughs> Got some work to do now. Oh, <laughs> oh man! So I was looking it up. Uh, it says that you are the voice of Black Ballot Power. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what that's all about. Sure. Um, so Black Ballot Power was started um, by the Union of Minority Neighborhoods out in Boston, and basically, it's a national campaign to get um, people of color out and registered to vote and organize and, and ready to, to hit the polls. Um, and that's on every level. Like, of course, we have a presidential election kind of like looming over us right now that we, we really need to get busy for. Um, oh, yeah. 
but you know on all levels on the local level on the state level like just getting involved in in the government and in politics and and using that political power and and you know reclaiming our rights um and making sure that we're getting out to vote and um getting registered and and getting our community organized so black ballot power um came to me and asked me to be um their artist representative um, for like the younger community and for the music community. And um, they asked me to write their anthem for Black Ballot Power's national campaign. And that's where We Gonna Make It came from. The song okay. that's up for song of the year. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I was watching that video. I was watching that video last night. The video was fire. Thank you. The video is real fire. Yo, congrats that on that. That's, everybody needs to know right now. We, we, we are living in uh, like a cartoon. With with that whatever that is in the White House, I don't even want to yeah. call him a person. I you know, forty five. Uh, just forty five. Yeah, forty five. The number forty five is going to become like six six six. It's going to become like <laughs> the number thirteen. Like in like, we're not going to have a forty fifth floor and no. hotels after a while. Like you go, oh, you we stand on forty six. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, and the weirdest part is nothing about what's going on with him. Uh, and this is why it's great what you're doing and getting the word out because people need to know how severe this is. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I've talked to crowds and I've been on stage and I've said, listen, a lot of people don't like the man and didn't vote for the man, but I still don't think enough people did enough. Like, you did not like him enough yeah. because there are people in your lives that you need to be like, look, this is not, this is not the, the, the false equivalence last time between him and Hillary. Oh, they're both bad. Nah, we can discuss Hillary politically. Yeah. We could talk about that. This this is a cartoon villain on the other side. This guy, I mean, the stuff he says, I, I can't imagine. Well, I know why the people who vote for him vote for him. I think we yeah. all know what it really is. It has nothing to do with his uh, plans on economy, on the economy, on foreign affairs, we, we know what it is. Yeah, like at this you know? point, if you can, if you, if that's what you're supporting, at this point, I know what type time you're on, you know? Um, yeah. And, you know, I think that part of the worst part is, it's not just him as a, as a single entity, as a single man, it is the followers and what it has created here, you know, like, it's the base, it's the people who you live next door to, it's the people who are doing these things that he is, um, you know, giving out Ampl the gospel for, for them to be done. Like, it's that, he, like, that's the, that's the worst part. He's amplifying these cowards, man. Exactly. He's letting them feel big and strong. And it's like, no, you guys are weak. That man is weak. Mm -hmm. And th this boasting mentality that he has where he just, I've never, I, I asked people, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I asked people on stage, like, what about him? You know, yeah. I said, let me ask you something. I said, the black version of Donald Trump, okay? And I mean, in bombast, sort of an outlandish personality, mm -hmm. is Don King. Mm -hmm. Right now, I can make a strong case that Don King is a far better businessman. All right. Don <laughs> King, as far as I know, doesn't have any bankruptcies under his belt. Mm -hmm. But Don King, in sort of a boisterous personality, would be the black equivalent of Donald Trump. And I'll ask him, would you ever, in your, in your wildest dreams, vote for that man? And of course, everybody said no. Yeah. He wouldn't even, if in the 90s, if Don King came out and said that Bill Clinton wasn't from this country, he'd get laughed out of the United States. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the thing that bothers me, really, about when Trump was coming up in this whole thing. He was like, Obama's not from America. And it, he should have been laughed Trump off like this guy's a nut. Of, right. No. Well, I don't know if she, I don't know if she, um, meets the requirements, like, as far as being from the United States, like, so brown people, <laughs> brown He's doing people that. can't be from here no more? Like, I don't understand. What are you talking about? 
he's do, he's doing that whole thing again, and it's always that way. And it's the it's the news outlets that entertain it, like yeah. they report on it. Like before, this is before he was even the nominee. They're yeah. like Donald Trump said, like who cares what the Donald Trump is a is a uh, the, to me he's like a, an old dude yelling at his TV. You know, like the Simpsons, like old man yells at cloud, like that's him, and he should have been treated as such. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a it's a lack of respect for the first black president to even entertain such things. Yeah, you know, and that's what that's what bothers me. And I think, in addition to obviously getting him out of there, we have to make sure that we get the Senate. Yeah, as well. That is a must. Keep the House, get the Senate. Those are must. For sure, and people need to be aware of like. It's not just that people, you know, don't like him and that he says terrible things. It's the consolidation of power. It's the tipping of the scales. It's the backwards, backhanded, backdoor stuff that he's doing that not everybody's paying attention to and seeing what's happening to the government yep. <laughs> and the and nation why... and how it's going like, What's what happens within the next couple of weeks, realistically, is going to affect all of us directly, whether we believe so or not. And, and it's it's real. Like this time, I know every time there's an election, people are like this is the election of our lives. Like vote. Like you know, your life depends on it. Like no, like all seriousness. Like this, if there was ever an election that was like, listen, this is the one. This is the one that is really gonna be crazy if nobody gets out and does something it's it's this one right now 100 percent, 100 percent. you said it i couldn't have said it better these next this next month is crucial mm -hmm. we got to make sure we get the word out and i mean sort of <laughs> in, a, in a goofy note for me i just i just want to be able to enjoy halloween you know what i'm saying like i love yeah. halloween and this man's ruining i don't want this to be my last halloween Mm -hmm. Because this dude outlaws Halloween. TikTok, just trying to take away all things, everything. All the fun, right? Like, I'm just trying to... Everything. I'm just trying to chill, man. Like, can I just, you know... So, I want to um, <clears throat> sort of close things out uh, yeah. asking this question. So, what if you had access to a time machine, right? Like, you had... You got your time machine, right? Mm -hmm. Hop in that thing... Now, everybody says, you know, would you do this? Would you do that? Like, who would you save? Who would you, whatever. Man, I know what I would do if I had a time machine. I would go to concerts, right? Concerts that I wasn't around for or I wasn't old enough to be at. So if you had a time machine and you can go to any concert at any time, what concert or concerts would you travel to? That is a good question. Um... Honestly, I would probably go to a Tupac concert because I've seen, <laughs> I've seen, you know, the people that I admire in concert, like I've seen Lauryn Hill and I've seen Erica Badu and I've seen Nas and I, you know, but like, I've never, I'll, I'll never get to experience seeing Pac. And he is just such a huge influence on my life. Like, let me tell you something, when that hologram came out, I was like, I will pay good money to sit up in front of that hologram, okay? <laughs> like, well, front row, because that's the closest I could get to, to being at a pop concert. So I would, I don't know, I'd go to a pop concert. That, I don't know which one, but I'd go to one. That's hey, you could, if you had a time machine, you can go to all of them. Facts, yeah. And Real honestly, talk. I think, I think Pac would rock with me as an artist, to be perfectly honest. Like, I think he would have liked the music that I make. So I would try to slip him a, a CD or something. Yeah. That's what's up. KRS did. KRS rocked with me, so that was cool. He got to get my last album. Man, I got to meet KRS one. Like, this is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to, I got to meet my my legends for the most part. I haven't come across Queen Latifah yet. I'm still waiting for that. That's coming. Um, you get there. But I did get to rock the stage with KRS, and he, you know, grabbed me by the shoulder and was like, "You're dope." And I was like, "What?" Here's the CD. Thank you. Oh my god. That gosh. is. I talked. Me and my brother always talk about people we just want to sit down and talk to. And KRS-One is like right near the top of the list, if not the top of the list, because nobody loves what they do more than he loves what he does. Nobody 
the, the passion that he displays when he talks about hip hop. You can see it in his eyes. He's so excited. He's like, yeah. You know, he, oh, his voice gets high. You gotta be on the record. I'm like, I gotta talk to this dude. Yeah. I, I teach. Um, I used to teach Black history, and I, I teach um, history of hip hop right now, and the elements of hip hop usually in like summer school, or like if somebody asked me to come and teach it for the their students, I'll, I'll go. Um, but I taught about KRS. Like I used to show like you know like what he says about like the rapper versus the MC, and like his his theories on hip hop and his history of hip hop. I used to bring that into my classroom. So. When that moment happened, it was like, I'm dope. You like me? KRS told me I'm fire. Can't nobody tell me shit. Nobody can say nothing to me. <laughs> Everybody leave me alone. I don't care what y'all got. I mean, you can't even, not- like, what do you do after that, right? Like, <laughs> what do you, no, no one can tell you anything. No. Nope. No one can ever criticize you. Nobody I'm can ever go. He said he wanted to hear me rap more. Oh, y'all can't tell me nothing. I'm good. <laughs> Hey, yeah, uh, Jasmine, I'm not really feeling your rhymes. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> For Let me tell you, you did feel yeah, my so rhymes. <laughs> King of the Boom Bap was feeling my rhymes. Yeah. So there's nothing you can say to phase me. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. And, and if you listen to, speaking of Kamala, you know, her interview yesterday, they asked her who her favorite rapper was, and she said, best rapper alive yeah. is Tupac. So... <laughs> Maybe they know, you know something what? we don't know. I can't even be mad at that because people ask me that question all the time. People are like, who's the greatest rapper alive? And I'm like, Pac. <laughs> like, I know we're saying alive, but like Pac is my favorite. He's my great, he's the greatest rapper of all time, period, to me. So I can't, it doesn't even resonate in my head. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, so, no, no. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no doubt. No doubt. I'm just trying to spread a conspiracy theory that he's alive. <laughs> And, and, you know, the CIA you know. put a tweet out that was like, we don't know where Tupac is. Mm. They were asked, we got, I guess, like, they did this thing where, like, people could ask them 10 questions, and they put it on their Twitter and was like, we don't know where Tupac is. <laughs> I was like, oh? Yeah, okay. Yo, so, Pop, if you out oh. there, hit us up. <laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine's trying to get on the track with you. Hi. I'm trying to get you on the show. You know what I mean? Uh, I think we'd have a good time, Pop. I, you know, I know you're on the island right now, kicking it. With Biggie. <laughs> um, that's right. Black Elvis in the building. We know what's up. Uh-huh. Uh, but listen, Jasmine, uh, it was great talking to you. Thank you. Uh, I had a great time. I, uh, good luck at the Boston Music Awards. Congratulations again on your Thank three you. nominations. Three nominations. Three. I know you're going to be humble and go, I'm just, I'm just happy to be nominated. <laughs> but we know the truth. We know what's going on inside. We know what's going on inside. I can't mess with me, baby. We know what's up. But congratulations on that. Congratulations on your new video. Uh, Make sure you guys check her out. Make sure you check out Jasmine Red. She's amazing. Um, Once again, I want to shout out Boston Cannabis Week, Experience Creative, the good folks at Boston Hemp Company and MCR Labs. This has been another episode of the Lamont Experience. See y'all next time. Peace.